Hello SOLIDWORKS Power Users, this is Alim Vergato. I just want to add my two cents to the brainstorming that started in the last SOLIDWORKS Power User Challenge. Um, if you remember, it's about uh, simplifying a complex surface or maybe approximating a complex surface is the right way to say it, into a um, series of planar facets. Uh, and in this case, I'm using a triangular, uh, sol a triangular solution where each uh, facet is actually a triangle. The reason I recorded this video is because the functionality seems to be there. We have face curves, we have uh, points on splines, we have the segment tool to, to get what we want. Um, but really there, is, there are tools that are disconnected and it's hard to uh, use them together. So by putting our minds together, maybe we can uh, describe the best process that maybe can be used by SOLIDWORKS to create, uh, to add this functionality native in the, in the software. So uh, let me describe a couple of things that are possible. So for example, what you're looking here on the right, what I was trying to do was uh, using uh, reference points on splines. So uh, I hope you guys know that, um, let's make this visible. Actually, you know, let's, let's use this uh, uh, model. So um, reference points on splines, select uh, an edge, and you pretty much specify how many points you want. The, the problem with this is gonna distribute the points evenly on the spline, right? Same thing, I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. I'm gonna draw straight lines between them and then I'm gonna use the loft command to, to create my uh, tessellation. Um, same thing with the segment tool. So segment tool would put points uh, equally spaced on entities like line lines, uh, arcs, and uh, splines. I was thinking about using the face curves, which are pretty spectacular, as you, as you probably know, uh, because they're gonna add more face curves in the area uh, where um, I need actually more definition in the shape and less in the area where this looks a little bit more um, flat. Um, and by the way, when you run face curves, if you want to keep all of them inside the same sketch, I hope you guys know it's a good idea to start the 3D sketch before you start the face curves command. So I'm just going to do it here. Let's pick only the pink ones. And I have eight of them. I, I guess that's a good number to uh, tessellate this surface, let's say. Uh, so at this point, if you're looking what I have here, I have these splines. They are not straight lines would be ideal if I can get even straight lines, wouldn't that be nice? And then you can simply uh, think about ways to, to simplify this. So let me hide the surface because right now what I need are just these lines. And um, do one more thing. I'm going to turn this into construction geometry um, because I want to refer the endpoints, right? So that's a quick way to create my endpoints. Next. Let's get out of this sketch. I don't want to add to this sketch. Uh, if anything, I'm gonna color it. So it's gonna be easier for us to, to see it in space. And let's start another 3D sketch. This time I'm just gonna use the line command. And what I want is to be able to create this lines. Okay, just have to be careful to start from in one direction and go in the other. Maybe a macro can be created to automatically pick all these points and draw the lines based on the points that you have in the sketch, the endpoints that you have in the sketch. Also checking here, looks like this endpoint hasn't been attached to the endpoint of that line. I did the same thing here uh, or right here at the top. So let's see which one is a little bit wrong. Yeah, it looks like this endpoint was not attached to this. So let me try to drag it. If it's gonna allow me, remember this is a 3D sketch, um, sometimes it's easier just to apply a coincident relation. And something is wonky here, let's undo. And let me re just recreate this once. So line, point, end point, and end point, right? So now I have straight lines in here that are simulating the shape. I can hide the original sketch, right? So I just have these lines. Um, if this would be if these two lines would be actually two edges, I can run planar surfaces between them and solders would pretty much fill the gap. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna use the loft command um, because they are two lines in the same plane, it's gonna create a planar surface. Now, this is a bit of a problem right now because I couldn't find a, a nice way to create this kind of 
flowing nicely. You, there is a lot of repetitive work. And again, I'm wondering if a macro can be created to um, speed up this work. So first of all, I need the selection manager. Let's pin this down. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm using this option to select groups. So I'm going to click and then press enter, click, press enter, and enter again to terminate the command. Let's see if it's finishing, right? Let's make sure this sketch is visible so we can keep seeing it. Uh, the other thing I would like to make sure is that I'm hiding this surface. So now let's think about keyboards, shortcuts. So tap to hide, right? We just added that. So let's see. Loft command, click, enter, click, enter, enter to stop the selection manager, enter to stop the command, move your mouse over this and press tab, and then press enter again to start the loft command. So click, enter, click, enter, 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 tab, enter. Right, so this theoretically can be um, a possible sequence that can be, I imagine, macroed. Right, you just have to be careful to to go in the right sequence. So again, enter, select, enter, select, enter, 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 tab, enter, enter, select, enter, enter, enter enter tab right so if i'm showing you right now all the surfaces you can see the result and uh, also this one right so i was able to tessellate it um using triangles i think what we're looking for here is also ways to automate the process as much as possible so i'm just wondering i just want to give you some ideas uh, feel free to take what I have here and take it to another level. Uh, I'm also very much uh, interested in the four uh, edged uh, elements, four edge polygons. So let's see what it comes out of it. Thank you very much.